Uh, I'll know if we're back up because the Twitch chat will start talking to me again. I think. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Yeah, good. Right then, uh, welcome back everyone, sorry about that, uh, Hayden's internet decided that it didn't want to stream this race anymore. Uh, so yeah, just to sum up what's happened on this first lap, Johannes Priest, as we're watching in the number one car, got past Damien Konzik on that first lap. Everyone managed to get through the entirety of Sector 1 without any issue. Um, there was some minor contact in Sector 2, Damien Konzik getting very sideways there out of that first chicane. Turns five and six. And drops a second off the back of Johannes Priest. That's big for him. He needs to stay within that second to keep any sort of toe coming down the front and the back straight. Number 42 car in the pit lane. That is, ooh, a heavily damaged uh, Cryonics Racing Aston Martin. In the pit lane, the number 42 car, and I think that might be their race over. Greg Ellis from PLR Esports getting back through up the field. He was the man that was turned around at the turn 5-6 chicane on lap 1. Lost a whole bundle of positions from it. But the top 3 at the moment remains the same as it was coming through the timing line at the end of lap 1. Johannes Priest, Damian Konzik and Callum Jones for the Toga Racing eSports team uh, currently occupying the top three positions in the order that I just mentioned them in. Then behind we've got uh, Vincenzo Senatore. He's having a very, very tidy little race, I must admit. P4 at the moment in the 627 uh, NCR Most Wanted team. I like that team name in all fairness. Reminds me of the uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted series, which I absolutely loved as a, as a kid. I played that endlessly on my Xbox. Damien Konzik again, having issues through that turn 5-6 chicane. He's invalidated that lap because of it, and I expect he will have picked up a warning for it. Um, extending the gap to Callum Jones, though, possibly taking liberties with track limits a tiny bit, as Matthew Hughes manages to get ahead of uh, Johannes Thiesing in the Cryonics Racing 404 Ferrari. That's the uh, Bentley getting up into P8 at the moment. I love that for Matthew Hughes. Uh, the Boatley, one of our favourite cars. As we've got a car around, who is it? It's Zach Morgan. He rejoins safely enough in that number 29 uh, UCC Sim Racing McLaren. Sorry to anyone in the YouTube chat who was supporting those guys. That is not how you would have wanted to see that car get started in this race. As we've got Mark Anika in the pit lane as well for the other UCC Sim Racing machine. Front bumper is popped up. Um, that's going to be some damage repair for those guys. That is really, really unfortunate. Uh, and they are about to fall down to last, I would expect, as they wait for that damage to finish getting repaired. That's really, really unfortunate for those guys. Really unfortunate. Are you still there, Hayden? No, he's not. Okay, I think Hayden has uh, Hayden's completely died, so I'm just going to do this solo for a bit. I hadn't realised that he left. Uh, I think he's definitely having some major internet problems. Uh, just give me a second, chat. What I'm going to do, because uh, I can't see any of your guys' chats right now, uh, because obviously we've moved streams. So I am going to just pop out the new chat so that I can see any messages from that one. So if you've said anything so far, unfortunately, I can't see those messages. I'm just popping the chats out now uh, so that we can get working with it. Do, 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 do. Pop out this chat as well. There we go. Hmm. Have I remembered to turn my mic on? Oh, it is on. That's good. That's always handy. Now I have both chats. Here we go.
So yeah, welcome back to everyone. Unfortunately, I can't see uh, anything on the TikTok side because I don't have that chat available to me. Uh, I do apologise about that. Not a lot I can do, but welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are getting on with the racing here as Callum Jones almost sneaks back into Damien Konzik's... Uh, almost sneaks back into Damien Konzik's one-second gap there as Johannes Priest really didn't have a good last lap. 130.1, well off the pace. Damien Konzik now all over the back of him. Johannes Priest appears to have uh, gone through those tyres already, possibly in the Porsche. Maybe. Oh, back. Hello, Hayden is back. Maybe the pressures aren't quite working for Johannes, but uh, yeah, that car, that Porsche not looking as stable under here as um, as uh, Damien Konzik is apparently, according to uh, WRL Mr. OP, who I'm going to assume his real name is Alf, seeing that that's the next part of his name, possibly short for Alfie. Um, both Porsches are struggling with the first chicane. Let's have a look. Let's see... Let's see how much they are struggling with that first chicane, because we get a good camera angle of it as they come down towards that turn 5, 6 chicane. So it'll be interesting to see. That lap, both of them back on the pace. 28.995 for Johannes Priest, and 28.697 for Damien Konzik, who has really closed up to the back of the number 1 Porsche. But this turn 5, 6 chicane that they're just coming up to, apparently they've been struggling with. So we'll wait and see if they are continuing to struggle with these particular corners. Uh, basically, Hayden's PC decided that it didn't want to anymore, uh, so the stream went down. But now we're back. No, yeah, you're right. They are both struggling through that chicane, hitting those curbs in not quite the right way. Um, you're absolutely you're absolutely spot on. I can't, I can't deny it. You, yeah, not quite taking the curbs the right way. Rest in peace, rest in peace, Hayden's PC. He is back now. Uh, yeah, I'm back now. But it, yes, it, it yes, wasn't happy <laughs> momentarily. <laughs> As we see a move with that. made, that is Joe Tomlin for the Big Brain Racing number 47 car getting past Graniero for P11. We've still possibly got some moves coming up the front. Vincenzo Senatore only just behind Callum Jones at the moment. Literally right behind each other, nose to tail between the top two and nose to tail again between the bottom two. As Callum Jones sets the fastest lap of the race, 28.377. The man who said he wouldn't be as fast in any other car as he is in the Bentley, proving himself wrong. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apologies for that. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to pinpoint the uh, root cause of the problem, but we are we uh, are back at least. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hey, Julius. <laughs> Julius saying hello in the YouTube chat. Uh, how am I? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, I'm not too bad. A little bit tired from today. I've had a very busy day. Damien Konzik, a massive moment for Johannes Priest. Here we go. This is going to be a move here. And, oh, in the background, Vincenzo Senatore has gone off as well. It's a move for P1. Damien Konzik on the outside, coming towards this turn 7 8 chicane. There's contact. Damien Konzik goes off the road. Callum Jones looking possibly to gain some positions here like a hawk, picking up the scraps. Nothing quite there. Damien Konzik into the lead and Vincenzo Zenatore down to sixth place. All happened at once at the same chicane. That was chaos. Big time. Um, I'm not sure if the stewards might look at the uh, Konzik sort of turn in and uh, hit bang, door bang. Uh, but uh, looked. Um, well, I think they did. Did look pretty. Yeah, these two the Porsches least. are going to be heated now. These guys. Yeah. And lap traffic. <laughs> lap traffic ahead of them. In the form. Are we on lap traffic already. In the Jeez. form of the number 28 BMW. The BMW and one of the BMWs and one of the Aston Martins had some major contact. Both are in the pit lane fixing damage and are now already laps down. Wow. So uh, yeah, the number 28 BMW and the number. 42 Aston Martin both a lap off the field uh, oh so hang team. on the concerts let, let him pass yeah, yeah concert has let him pass that's interesting maybe they thought that uh, maybe they thought maybe they've looked at the replay realised that Damien turned across and then kept the position by going off track and thought uh, uh, to, to avoid it. penalties yeah absolutely that doesn't surprise me for the big brain racing guys you know um, it's Damien Konzik again taking all sorts of the wrong curbing through that turn 5 6 chicane, and now he's having to yeah, defend a little bit from Callum yeah. Jones. 
Has that Porsche got damage on both sides of the car, or is it just? A, it's on the it's on the right hand side. Is it? Is it not? I don't know. Look. Yeah, it's got damage. It's got damage on that right side. And Callum's gonna. Is he gonna set up inside? No, it's not. He's, th he's thinking. Uh, uh, thinking better of it. Always oh, almost goes to the outside. He's gonna hang it around the outside, you know. He's still yeah, alongside on exit. Yeah, I know. But I think yeah, you've got to think about the bigger picture here. Damien Konzik is able to stick with Johannes Priest. So maybe yeah. in the long run it will be better for Callum Jones to uh, to just stick behind Damien, take the toe, close up to the leaders and try and uh, get away from these guys behind who are now closing in rather quickly. Ben Zietz in the uh, Cryonics Racing 717 car. Having a better race than the poor number 42 Cryonics Racing Aston Martin who uh, yeah. who are two laps down already, unfortunately. Ah, it's a shame. I, 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 we missed the start of the race, I think. We didn't capture the uh, the start. It was miraculously was clean. Oh, okay. There was one car that got turned around, and that was it, in the, in the second chicane. Oh, interesting. The whole uh, of the rest of the first lap was completely oh. clean. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's that's good though. Samuel Braxton on Twitch. Well, it says, "Hey, chat, welcome in. Hope you hope you're well, Sam." Yeah, apologies, guys. My internet just decided to to play up. Uh, I think, it, yeah. Um, but it's we're sorted now. We're sorted now. But it, this battle for uh, P2 right now is starting to spice up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Essentially, you could and not, argue. Oh, go on. Not just battle for P2 either. This is the battle for the final two podium places at the moment. Yeah. There's four yeah, cars agreed. involved and only two places left on the podium. So, you know, two of these cars are gonna are gonna get there. And two of them aren't the 218 cars around. 218 car is around. That's Greg Ellis, he's got it wrong coming out of the turn five six chicane. Yeah, let's uh Bounce yeah, let's cross, say, yeah. I... I don't know if there's maybe been a helping hand there, I would doubt it. It's quite easy to end up in that part of the gravel trap if you get it wrong on your own. Uh, anyways, back to what Julius was, jet, was saying just before uh, everything imploded momentarily. Um, one more thing. Tell us a little bit more about the Toga Monthly Motorsport Roundup. Okay, um, so yeah, this is a this is a very recent announcement for, for Toga Motorsport. It's something that me, Hayden, and, uh, and our head of content creation, Lan Lantern, have been uh, kind of cooking in the background for, for a little while now. Um, you know, we've always thought that a good way to interact uh, and engage our community a little bit more would be to do a big live stream event, doing essentially a recap of not only the real life motorsport world, but also the virtual motorsport world. Um, so some starting sometime, I think we're looking in, in kind of the middle of March, mid, middle end of March, uh, April, sorry, we're already at the end of March. Um, we're going to do our first live stream Toga Monthly Motorsport Roundup, where we're going to look at all of the major, you know, incidents, crashes, controversies on or off track uh, of, of the major uh, motorsport championships, you know, IndyCar, F1, uh, WEC and IMSA. Uh, and we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about them, talk about how, how we would look at it from, from, from people who know a lot about racing, how, you know, whether we've got different opinions on, on certain incidents to the stewards. Uh, whether we've got different opinions on, on, on whether a certain move is, is on or not. You know, we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff, uh, talk about the controversies, talk about the facts, and uh, just give it a little bit of a kind of roundup of everything that's happened in, in the real-life motorsport world. And what we're also going to do is we're going to open up the floor to you guys to bring up any topics that you want us to discuss. So there is, at the moment, if you go into the uh, Toga Motorsports Discord, which Hayden is about to handily link, in the in in the chats, because <laughs> because we're on the same brainwave like that. What you're going to see is you're going to see um, you're going to see in the Toga announcements. There's a nice little Google Doc that you can fill out where you can recommend subjects for us to talk about. You can submit clips of crashes, uh, whether real life or virtual, and we'll have a look at them. You know, we'll talk about who we think is at fault, uh, have a little discussion about it, what we would have changed, how we would have penalised it. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about pretty much. Uh, we're going to cover as much as possible from the last uh, from the last month of racing. Obviously, this first one is going to be a little bit of a bumper uh, episode because we've got the first three rounds of F1 to talk about and the first two rounds of both WEC and IMSA to talk about. Um, so it is going to be no, sorry, the first round of WEC and the first two rounds of IMSA to talk about. So it is going to be busy. 
Uh, we're going to have a lot of stuff to cover. But yeah, should be uh, looking forward to making it a monthly thing uh, where we all get together and, and really have a chance to interact with you guys properly about, about motorsport. Uh, agreed. Uh, agreed. Yeah, no, I've, I've linked them in the chat. I've linked them in the chat for yeah, you. There you go, look. So brainwave, <laughs> a brain, a brainwave, not brainwave, on the same uh, wavelength. Sorry. Um, I, I'm still facing a few uh, gremlins. I've sort of narrowed it down to race control being the problem. Oh, lol. <laughs> uh, I see. I seem to seem to have closed it down, and everything now seems to start working again. But. Uh, and that's the only because that's the only thing I don't use on a regular basis. You see. Yeah, yeah. On my on my on my on my PC, but uh, I'll see I'll see how I see how we fare for the rest of this race now. Um, I've moved it to a different hard drive, so I don't know if I'm having slowly having hard drive failure, if you like. Mm. Yeah. So things kind of quieting in down a little bit. Christian Muller in the Big Brain Racing number thirty. BMW still kind of hampering on the back of uh, Ben Zietz, but Zietz has dropped off the back of Callum Jones just a little bit. That last lap he made up a little bit of ground, but nothing major. We have still got Greg Ellis in that PLR Esports car after having been turned around once uh, by someone else and, and once on his own doing. is uh, still trundling around, still trying to get... Uh, these positions back and the number 28 BMW that's the UCC car as oh off the track goes uh, Roman Yachenko uh, momentarily loses positions to oh no sorry that was Robert Conzen in the Austrian Apex Alliance the AAA car gone off track um, so yeah the number 28 car that is the UCC sim racing car they've picked up 15 seconds worth of penalties for, um, I, I'm guessing, the incident with the number 42 car that caused them both to uh, go to the pit lane. 15 seconds for car 28 for causing a collision with car 42. We've also got 15 seconds for car 404 for causing a collision with car 218 on that one. That's interesting, I can't see. For car 404, where are those guys? Oh, that's big. That's Johannes Thiesing, who's currently P8. They've got 20 seconds of penalties now. Wow. So that is, uh, at the moment, that would drop them significantly. They'd be down in P... Somewhere around P18, I think. P18, P19 at the moment. That is not good for those guys. Those 20 seconds of penalties are really going to hurt. We've also got a 5 second for car 104 for causing a collision with car 40. And a five second for car 42 for causing a collision with car number 70 on lap nine. So that sums up the penalty situation for now. As Damien Konzik takes the fastest lap, 27.962. He's closing in onto the back of Johannes Priest again. It's almost like uh, it's almost like the tyres are sort of. He's had a few cool down laps and he's now now re pushing again. Yeah, yeah, is it is it? almost yeah. like that, isn't it? Yeah, almost like he's taken taken some time to. To let the um, to let the tyres kind of chill out and not necessarily be so over pressure, and now he's kind of just starting to take those uh, those tenths back out of the car ahead. Oh, sorry, I just uh, changing the subject ever so slightly. Um, the new uh, race that obviously race department I saw it in Discord earlier um, is now overtake now called overtake is overtake GGs now. You guys seen that? Uh, yeah. Race department is now now no longer. Uh, it's now been now been taken over. I did find that they uh, cheekily or sneakily. Uh, you don't see if you can. They, they will try and charge people for a monthly subscription to sign up. Really? So you scroll right to the bottom and you can see a free account section. That's interesting. Oh, as Johannes Thiesing is fighting now with Bjorkman in the 420 car from Poggers Racing. Brilliant team name, by the way. Yeah, a strong team there, that. Absolutely. One of the strongest, arguably. They're still just kind of kind of half battling here. It's nothing crazy. Bjorkman is still ahead. Uh, but I think there was a half move from, from Johannes Thiesing. 
So we'll keep our eyes on this. I'm also going to keep my eye on the battle at the front because that gap is still... I mean, it's fluctuating, you know. It's still kind of in that three or four tenth range the majority of the time. So we'll keep our eye on that as much as possible as well. What do you say that the 20 second penalty was for car four, 404? That's, uh, that's a lot of time. Uh, so it's it was a 15 second for causing a collision on lap one with car 218. Oh, and they got, they got a five second in they got a five second in qualifying for a poor rejoin. Ah. And it has been appealed. Here we go. No, that's the number 28 car. So the number 28 car has already opened a ticket to appeal its 15 second penalty. Uh, saying they were side by side. Oh, the appeals process has already started, has yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've opened an appeal ticket already. The number 28 car saying that they were side by side with the number 42 and that he took a very interesting line. The 28 admits that he that he was at fault for the incident, but feels that a 15 second penalty is very harsh. Well, that will get reviewed, won't it, by one of our uh, other, other stewards? <laughs> probably one of us. <laughs> yeah, would you? Yeah. It'll probably be, uh, be me or Owen at the end of the day, uh, or possibly you. I know that you tend to get a little bit less involved in that stuff because you're doing all the other behind the scenes bits. You don't need to be worrying about uh, you I'm don't need to be worrying about the appeals and uh, stuff as well. No, true. No, I did just see comments in the chat saying our four hours of Nords is now completely full. Yep, yeah, um, I, I yeah, took the last spot in Soga Racing just uh, just to secure us, uh, us a spot. Is it, me? If we... is it me and you at the moment? Uh, I think it's you and Peter, uh, yeah, uh, and the Peter, drivers yeah. down. Um, Although, so, I think uh, Davide's got a team signed up as a placeholder yes. in the VM tag yeah. as well, so we can just... Uh, Get him to sign out, and then we'll really quickly sign up. <laughs> well, we, we don't we don't really know how many slots uh, Nords is going to have. Hold. I expect yeah, it'll be so... I expect it'll be more than the fifty. It should be exactly. Yeah. I would hope it's going to be a big grid like it is, uh, like Suzuka. Uh, spa, yeah, or a Spa or something or spa, like that. Yeah. Like I'm hoping we'll see a, a, a capacity for more than a hundred cars would be brilliant. Because uh, that's how it is in real life, you know. The, like, the real life. The real life 24 hour of the Nord July for last year had 135 entries, and this year they reckon it's going to have 160. Like, those are big grids. So clearly, yeah. clearly it has the capacity for it. Yeah, I totally, totally, uh, totally for that. Um, I just re downloaded race control and put it on a new drive, and everything seems to be a bit more stable now. So I think it was race control causing uh, all my problems. But Here we uh, go. This anyway, is sorry. So Christian, uh, Christian Graniero from uh, the number 787 car is already straight into the pit lane. Pit window is literally only just open less than a minute ago. Um, and they are straight in down the pit lane and uh, doing the swap, uh, you know, as is the name, driver swap. They're doing that swap over already. Interesting, Damien Konzik has lost a lot of time. I think it must have been traffic. He's now 1.4 seconds behind Johannes Priest again. Oh, wow. Lots of time lost to traffic this lap. Lots and lots and lots. Is there any chance for WRC getting a spot on the monthly roundup? Uh, so, yeah, we've opened it to all motorsports. We are going to be focusing mainly on, you know, as I said, F1, WEC, IMSA, IndyCar, because it's the ones that those of us that are hosting watch the most and know the most yeah. about. But if you want to submit, you know, if you if you want to submit uh, a suggestion about us talking about the WRC rule change, and if we think it's something good that we can talk about, that people will be interested in, then we'll take the time to read up on the rule change and we'll talk about it for sure. We'll talk about our opinions on it. Because um, as as we've said, you know, it's a way for us to boost our it's a way for us to boost our um, our interaction with the community. And if you if you if you want to hear us talk about WRC stuff, then we'll talk about WRC stuff. So. Don't hesitate to submit it and uh, and ask the question, because we would uh, yeah we'd, we'd be more than happy to have a look at it if we feel that it will fit in with the already relatively packed schedule for this month. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's going to be quite a hectic month, isn't it? <laughs> to say the very least. Lots of cars taking to the pit lane already. Yeah, it's only a short pit window though, isn't it? Here, ten minutes uh, time to get everything done. So. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, with the aim of. Uh, Obviously, that 10-minute pit window, the aim being that if you've got one driver that is noticeably faster than the other, you don't just leave them in until there's, until there's only, like, 10 minutes of the race left. Yeah, and then exactly. set them out, and they only do, like, four laps. 
No, exactly. No, exactly that. I was always driving number two because I felt like I could drive better uh, in a second stint. Yeah, I'm very much the same. I don't like opening a race. Not a, not a long race. If it's only like an hour sprint race, I'm, o I'm okay with it. But I've never liked the feeling of being on the opening stint for an endurance race. I feel like there's just too much that can go wrong, and I don't want it to be my fault if it goes wrong. Yeah. No, exactly. No, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm 100% with you there. Yeah, my, my problem is definitely race control. It started happening again as soon as it opened, and now I've closed it. It picks it up fine. Who knows? It's the same thing as BTCC. We're getting rid of the hybrid systems. Yeah, Hayden is our uh, local BTCC nerd, so he'll be uh, he'll be more than able yeah, to I'm talk about the, by... uh, the BTCC rule changes. I'm sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm shocked, and I'm not shocked by that. I'll be completely honest uh, with uh, BTCC. Um, Something that yeah. you were kind of half expecting to happen. Yeah, well, I just never thought it, it never really. I don't want to talk about it. I'd rather bring it up on the show, the but. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really benefit. Like, you get d deducted how many uses you can do it, how, where you can do it, how long you can do it for. It just doesn't really work. Um, yeah. yeah, it doesn't really work. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If you guys want us to talk about this, don't hesitate. Join the join the motorsport Togo Motorsport server and drop it into the uh, drop it into the suggestions box, and we'll uh, have a rifle through uh, the week before we we go live and uh, select what we're going to talk about and do some independent research into them so that we come to the table kind of fully informed about what's going on. Here we go. That is someone coming into the pit lane. Who is it? Johannes Priest comes into the pit lane from the lead. That's interesting. Damien Konzik. As we've seen, this is a bit of a, a kind of continuous pattern with Damien Konzik. Staying out to the end of that pit window. I think him and his team are aware that he is slightly faster you know no discredit to uh, to the other driver of this 913 big brain racing car they're still immensely quick yeah. but um but damien contact is is like alien pace so i'm not surprised that they are that they are maybe opting to leave him in the car for 35 minutes um uh, and then do the driver swap at the end i mean I mean, that's a big risk, though, to do that because you can't guarantee that the faster car is going to be able to uh, pump in those lap times to, to build the gap. No, um, especially but it not, seems to be working. Like thinking about traffic right. and stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because like this 913 car is about to encounter, you know, there's two cars that they're going to catch in the next probably lap, lap and a half, two laps. So yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And both have stopped as well, haven't they? Yeah, it's, uh, it's P17, P18, respectively. Yeah. They both stopped, so, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, Johannes Priest, by the way, is currently down in... Well, that's not Johannes Priest. Oh, uh, is my... No, it's car number one. Yeah, I'm trying to find him. But when I click on him, it shows me... Oh, it's because, yeah. P12. My, yeah, my ACC race control hasn't caught up. Yeah, I was looking for the name Johannes Priest. And when it popped up with Michael Muth, and I got really confused. <laughs> so, yeah, they're down in P12. So, they have lost, uh, you know, a lot of position in that pit stop. But that's what you'd expect. Damien Konzik stays out for another lap. He might. I tell you what. Damien Konzik is in with a real chance of being able to squeeze another lap. Possibly two laps out of this. We got left, yeah, three and a half minutes. Yeah, we could get two more laps for sure. Right, and he crossed the line, must have crossed the line with about four minutes left to go. So he can get another two laps out of this. Uh, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be pretty late late into the race that we see him switch over. Whoever it is, where, what was his lap times? Obviously, I can't see them now because I've shut, I've shut well, my Damien race control. Yeah. Uh, last lap was a 29.2, faster than uh, everyone else in the top. Faster than everyone else in the top 11, except uh, Bjorkman in P3. Right, okay. So yeah, it's a big so, risk. And now, yeah. Obviously now he's right behind lap, like blue blue flags. Yeah, so the question but, is, does he come in this lap? Yeah, and I hit would personally. Before hitting this slap traffic that is going to slow him down. It'll be interesting to see uh, what he does. No, he no. keeps going. Clearly he thinks that he's going to be able to get past these guys without costing costing himself and the team much time which is a, a you know brave strategy I'm not I'm not denying that that is a brave brave strategy and 
Oh no, I got confused there. I thought something had happened, but it hasn't. Don't listen to me. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a tricky one because obviously these guys ahead of him. Callum Jones are and Bjorkman battling. both in. Callum Jones and Bjorkman are both into the pit both lane. Both in. It's right, going to be okay. interesting to see where these guys come out. Have those laps on older but warmed tyres managed to gain them any time or have they continued to lose to the leader, Johannes Priest? Johannes Priest is going to be coming around the final hairpin now. Here he comes through the piff path left right. Now towards the final chicane, we're going to see him pass underneath our camera position very, very shortly. Callum Jones, I expect, is going to get moving, or should I say Elias Fernando is going to get moving now. Now, indeed. yeah, yeah. So the number one car is going to be ahead of them. Yeah, I reckon that gap might have grown a little bit. The gap was about five seconds. There's the number one car passing underneath the pit board right there. Well, this could be quite a big gap, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It was about, f I think it was about five and a half seconds when, when P1 came to pit lane. And I think it has grown since then. Where does the 121 car slot back out onto track? It's still ahead of the 717 car. Gap is about nine seconds. That's a lot. But yeah, Daniel lost, Horn is close. Lost, However, obviously, Elias Fernando now on new tyres. We know he's very, very fast in that McLaren. And Conza uh, in the box, by the way. Conza in the pits. Yeah, he didn't have enough time to do another lap, so he did get two more laps out of it. Yeah, that's crazy. So now, now, now we'll see what what that's done, yeah. whether that's helped or hindered. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. He is literally the last pit box. So it's going to be very close. The number one car is going to be, I think, pretty much, if the gap has stayed the same, he's going to get moving. Um... A, a couple of seconds before the number one car comes past our screen. Fernando is really under pressure from Bjorn in the uh, 717 yeah, uh, yeah. Lambo. He's so close behind him now. Um, the gap's uh, yeah. really come down. Just going to keep uh, watching this 913 car because it's going to be really interesting to see where they come out. The car's down, off the jacks. It's moving. The number one car has only just crossed the finish line. This could be... I tell you what, that could be a race-leading decision to leave Damien Konzig in the car. Here we go, they're going to be side by side, coming towards... Where's the number one car? There it is! There it is, number one car, left of screen, oh God, Damien so Konzig. Oh and Athenstadt has come out ahead, but he's on cold tyres. Johannes Priest is on brand is on brand new tyres, and they are up to temperature. Whereas Athenstadt is going to have to wait for have his tyres to, to come into the window. Yeah, we have. And Johannes Priest does go to the lead. Sorry, it's not Johannes Priest anymore, it's Muthen. Um... <laughs> <laughs> My brain is catching up, I promise. No, Muthan, you're correct, you're correct, you're correct. Muthan goes to the lead. Go, then. Into the chicane. Ooh. They're still following each other, and... Yeah, that is... I mean, they've made a lot of time there. They've made... They've made over... They've made over a second... Uh, across those... Across those extra laps that... Um, that... Uh, that Damien Konzik ran. Compared to the number one car. Elias Fernando falling off the back of these guys a little bit. Gap uh, is, gaps 8.3. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of it's fluctuating quite a bit as they go through different parts of the circuit. But uh, Dan Bourne at the moment, Daniel Bourne, is managing to stay right behind him. That could have ended badly. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was worried about. That's why, that's why I was so on edge when I saw that they came out of the pit lane literally right next to each other. I was like, oh no, yeah, I'm it's all going to go wrong. <laughs> uh, but no, they managed to keep it. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that they kept it clean. You know, these guys are obviously very experienced racers to be able to get this much out of these uh, out of these cars, respectively. Six uh, five five is, uh, showing yellow. One. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, Ollie. It's one point three now. The gap. Uh, obviously, whether that's uh, tire warm up or uh, pace or a mixture of both, no, he's I expect just dropped it is, now. I expect it is the tires because that gap is now kind of stabilised. So I expect it is the tires. However, having run two laps extra on them, he's not going to be necessarily the fastest guy. As oh, here we go. Wide, is this a move coming, Lorenzo Cotalesa? Oh, he's hit him. He's hit the Ferrari. Aston Martin and Ferrari round at turn one. Cotalesa was. Oh. Possibly far enough along on the inside. That's going to be reviewed by the stewards, and I'm sure we're going to see a penalty handed out. Luca Amaral almost makes a bad rejoin, kind of just manages to get away with it. That could be looked at by the stewards as well. Uh, I doubt they're going to be best pleased with that particular situation. And the gap at the front is now shrinking 
Yeah, a gap has come down uh, quite considerably, actually. Um, yeah, it's, uh, he's, I think, uh, is it Muthan has, has not really had a very good second sector. I have been watching. went very deep at the half in there, though. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I, I don't know. I think pace is going to be similar between these two. I don't think there's going to be one uh, standout. It's whether or not they, who's going to make a mistake or who's going to just drive it cleanly for the next 21 or so minutes. Um, I'm on board with these guys watching them and uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting battle for sure for the next uh, 21 minutes for sure. Yeah, and a large oh, Fnaf move, by the way, oh, sorry. really under pressure now. He's got two cars for position for the final spot on the podium behind him. Uh, 0.5 to the car directly behind Daniel Bourne and then 0.7 further back to uh, Dan Young. I believe it is Dan Young. Is it Daryl Young? Sorry. Oh. De Young, yeah. In the um, in the number 30 Big Brain Racing BMW. So uh, this could be really interesting. However, Elias Fernando, now that his tyres are in, uh, into that working window, starting to just uh, kind of ease away. The gap's coming down. From, from uh, so the gap ahead. Yeah, sorry, Ollie. The gap is going up between the leaders and the gap's coming down. So Fernando is yeah. closing, closing onto the 913 yeah, Fernando last slowly. Lap. Fernando last lap five tenths faster than the leaders. Seven tenths faster than the leaders. Sorry. Like wow. that's that's big, you know. That's a big time to make with 20 laps left yeah. to go. That's, it, that's really good. It, it, I mean, we've got more than 10 laps left, and at the moment, he's pretty much exactly seven seconds behind the leaders. So, you know, he could be right up behind. If he can keep that kind of advantage with the tyres, he could be right up behind these guys by the end of the race. Just yeah. got to keep his head down and keep it clean. If either Elias or Callum are listening. Don't worry about pure pace. <laughs> Just keep it clean, please. Yeah, uh, Muthan is now uh, 1.7 ahead yeah, of... Uh, on the road. Yeah. He was four tenths so faster than Athens that last lap. And we'll see uh, Fernando is also again, gaining Elias as Fernando, well. Fernando fastest out of the top three again. But P4, Dan Young, slightly faster than him that last time. Sorry, Dan Bourne, slightly faster. <laughs> Only by only by three hundredths of a second, but faster is faster, you know. Whereas Daryl Young oh, yeah. has dropped off back to back to a second. It's also interesting that, that I'm assuming that's a bat marker that's behind these top two is keeping up pace uh, with, yeah, with them. Yeah, he is. I think it, it's it not dropped. Might be. I'm trying to see what number it is on the mini map. It looks like it might be. It definitely ends in a four, and it's a Ferrari. Four or four? I must be wrong. It doesn't end in a four. It no, that's a McLaren. A is it a McLaren? No. Yeah. That's just really stupid. Man. It might be then the number fourteen car of John Gray. It is. So that doesn't surprise me because the number fourteen car, that, that number fourteen Big Brain Racing McLaren, has been right at the front in uh, in other races we've had in this driver swap series. I understood. That so makes clearly, sense. He must have had some uh, some bad luck before it, uh, which is why it's at the back. And that now pushing on, yeah, makes total sense. Well, 18 or so minutes left to go out in this race, and I don't necessarily think it's uh, job done, is it? I, I I feel like there could be there's still a potential upset on the cards here. I feel that it's not complete. I think the gap's coming down slightly between the top two. Obviously, Fernando is is closing ever so slightly. So, one one mistake. Yeah, there's still yeah. stuff to come here for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm looking a bit further down the pack as well. The uh, the mid pack. There's a few nice few battles going on. It's just annoying my race control doesn't work. I give a better uh, better commentary on it because I'm having to shift right arrow at the moment. Uh, soon in NHL, Devils versus Islanders have to watch. Oh, imagine choosing actual. Imagine choosing actual sports over our pretend racing. That's. I mean, yeah. Really. That's not. That's not nice, is it? Honestly. Oh. So again, last lap, uh, Elias Fernando was um, three tenths faster than either of the top two. So that wow. gap is still coming down. Six point four now. So it's come down by what? It's come down by more than two seconds since he came out of the pit lane. Ah, great work by Fernando there. Yeah. Massively, 
Yeah, really massive respect to him. Yeah. And the thing is, what we what we what we need to remember is that he's pulling these cars behind with him. Yeah. They are coming with him every step of the way. So it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see uh, whether this uh, this fight for the uh, for the final podium positions end up ends up being open to more cars. <clears throat> We've got some cars putting in their uh, their best race laps at the moment. Luke Wilson, in, in, now in the Poggers Racing 420 car, is uh, pulling up to the back of the 627 car, uh, the BMW that currently has Terakov in it. Does Hayden watch hockey? I don't think he does. Uh, no. no. Oh well. no, I have once. I have once. Get this real life sport <laughs> chat out of here. Thank you. Thank you, Alf. For, uh, for showing where your where your loyalty lies. <laughs> yeah, get it out of here. Uh, we're joking. I think this is pretty much the closest battle we've got at the moment. I hit a bit of a lull stage, haven't we, where not a lot is uh, is going on. Yeah, the problem is now, essentially what we're doing is we're waiting for the second stint drivers to gain the time that the first stint drivers left on the table. Yeah. Uh, you know, these gaps opened up in the first stint when uh, when stuff was going wrong, people were having moments, there were little collisions. So it's going to be Ace's boy says hi. Is that Ace as in? That's, that's Alex. Alex, that's Alex. The, the commentator, I assumed it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, mate, how are you? So, yeah, the, these is. second stint drivers just kind of starting to uh, to close the gaps over. <laughs> oh, sorry, Elias. I'm so sorry. Please, please, Julius. Please accept my apologies. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not too great, bad. Alex. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Alex yeah. yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate you. Uh, right, I've got race control back open now, so hopefully, my I'll be able to do a lot more, a uh, lot more commentating. Uh, better commentating. Yeah, hopefully so, it works. So it's interesting at the moment. So P P1 and P2. From what I can yeah. see, one lap, the number one car has a really good lap and the 913 has a bit of a dodgy lap. And then the next lap, the number one car has a bit of a dodgy lap and the 913 has a really good lap. So the gap is kind of staying very Sad stable. Because they're, the, the... Not, they're not really consistent enough at the moment to yeah. keep the, the times. You yeah. know? Like the, yeah. the number one car, Muthen, occasionally does like a 128.6, right? Like, that's ridiculously fast. But last lap, he did a 20... There it is, see? It was a 29.3 his last lap time. Now it's a 28.9. Like, those those tenths, they really, really add up. No, it does. And actually, you're, you're right about uh, Fernando dragging these other two behind them. Because Fernando is absolutely flying right now. 28.6 was his last last time around. As all the Lambo almost or looks about to send up the inside. But I think these two are actually behind Fernando are actually playing a smart game. They're not they're not fighting Fernando. They're yeah. like you say, they're I literally think, just following behind yeah, him. Yeah, I expect obviously they've probably got they're probably sat in a call with people in their team. And they're probably well aware that Elias Fernando at the moment is dragging them up to, to the back of the pack. You know, if with a lap or two left to go, they're not at the tail of P two, then we'll start to see these guys fighting amongst themselves. Yeah, of course. But for now, them fighting is only lessening their chance of ending up in a higher position on the podium, which is just a silly thing to do. However, as I say that, Dan uh, Dan Bourne makes a mistake. Now six tenths he, off the yeah. back. Yeah, coming into that uh, second chicane down at turn seven and eight. I thought Young was going to pile into the back of him there for one second, but uh, he didn't, which was which was good, but. Yeah, no, it's 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 interesting to say that it's obviously we we have a vested interest in uh, who uh, who takes the third podium place, of course. But yeah, you know, we're not we're not saying that uh, we're not saying that we're gonna that we're gonna match fix or anything. But uh, you know, the the, the seven one seven car might find itself with a with a penalty for something if it if it was to make it. No, I'm completely I, joking. I, I'm completely I'm joking. Forward. I'd like to point that out. Uh, we would never do uh, we would never do such a thing. Um, so. so 
so, so you know at the start of qualifying, or sorry, the end of qualifying, we said, oh my god, this grid is so close together. Yeah. In the race, it actually hasn't materialised in that way, in any way, shape or form. No, and I think it's disappointing, because when you look at it, people's best lap times are really, really close. Oh, was Tom Winch in the, uh, in the number 327. They said it was him, it's not, it's the 555 car. I can, I can see, yeah, I literally clicked on him in an inch shot, I can see Wolfgang a... Wolfgang uh, Kuhn, there he is. In yeah. the uh, Anna Haltener, Anna Haltener racing. I think that's possibly supposed to be Annihilator racing. Um, had an issue there. Um, possibly contact with the... with the. Oh, hello. Oh, fighting. Daryl Young oh, yeah, going for a move yeah, on yeah, Dan Bourne. This is huge it, for Elias. 2.2 seconds is now the gap. Elias can run away and oh, Dan Bourne... Oh, he's got Oh, he's got Oh, he's held it. Oh, my God. Oh. That was, that was impressive. That was an impressive hold. I'm going to have to clip that on, YouTube, on Twitch because the noises we just made were absolutely insane. That was such a mental hold for, from Dan Bourne. I've got to give that to him. That was very impressive to be able to hold that. Oh my days, that was tight. God, that was crazy. At one point he was about 30 degrees across the track. Yeah, that was a, a big save from him. Big, big save. And it gives Elias Fernando some breathing room. I swear Daryl Young races for wild things. See, the name Daryl Young sparks something in my memory as well. I don't know if I'm mixing up two other ACC sim racers that I know of. But Daryl Young sparks something in my mind. Feels very familiar to say, to say and hear the name. So uh, I'm not too sure. Well, I've, 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 I've found it and I've clipped it and it sounds epic, by the way. <laughs> it's just me increasing in pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it literally is. It literally is. Uh, Paint Phil lives over on TikTok as well. Other likes on the TikTok, by the way. Thank you. Really appreciate you guys. I can hear myself now. There you go. That's annoying. I hate the sound of my own voice. Interesting. My wife Gap wouldn't say that. Is, uh, Gap is coming down again between Elias Fernando and uh, Athenstadt. But I think Athenstadt is still dropping off the back of Mewton. Although its no, last I, lap was faster, Athenstadt has dropped a lot yeah. this lap. 2.9. 2.9, I was going to say, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, he's dropped right back. He's, he's got an invalid lap, so I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if, if he's had a bit of a, if he's had a, bit of a bit, dip into the gravel or, or, the, or the grass somewhere. Yeah, a bit of an excursion. not uh, that yeah, far. Flags. Nice. Fernando's going to be faster than that. 29.3, yeah. Sorry, Tim. Tom Winch is now off. Oh my God! Another off. Another off. That is uh, Cook. Yeah, David, uh, Cook. David Cook. PLR Esports again. <laughs> Not had the luck today between the um, between their two Ferraris. Yeah. Uh, but... Not two Ferraris. It's this one Ferrari. I keep on forgetting there's two drivers in each car, man. <laughs> Uh, going a bit further down the grid, there's a nice little oh. battle spicing think, up for PA. Uh, I think the 218 car might have just rejoined and been hit again. Oh no. Because they are now spinning, unable to get out of the gravel trap and the grass. The tip is don't go full throttle in the grass because you're just going to keep spinning like you are at the moment. <laughs> just be careful. <laughs> listen, listen to just us. take it slowly. <laughs> Please, it's painful to watch. <laughs> oh, the gap has dropped by a whole second this lap between Elias Fernando and, and Athenstadt. I think he's struggling. 5.6, I think Athenstadt is struggling. He's, he's struggling. He's very right. slow. I don't know. Are they maybe having to fuel save? Uh, Shifts I mean, sound a little bit early in that Porsche. They're not using the whole rev range. Let's have a listen now. Oh, I don't know. That was okay. No, that was okay. That was okay. It's interesting. I will say, Jesus' vocal rate is rather impressive. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alex. <laughs> Here we go. So last lap, 29.5 for uh, Athenstadt. 29.3 for Elias Fernando. So the gap did come down, but then Athenstadt extended it again through the final sector. I mean, this just plays into into the hands of the leaders right now, doesn't it? Oh, 627 cars around. Terakov has gone round Kuzia Terakov. I don't know if there was contact with the 420 car of uh, of Luke Wilson. If there was, I'm sure it will be investigated. But that's Terakov down to seventh now. Luke Wilson up to sixth. I'm not sure if there was any contact. The front end of the McLaren doesn't look like it's been involved in anything. And I'm not going to rewind because this stuff that's going on at the top is uh, 
is far too interesting for me to take my eyes off of at the moment. <laughs> As there is lots of lap traffic at the moment for Muthen and Athenstadt to be dealing with. Yeah, Not there is so a lot, isn't there? for Elias Fernando. This could be interesting. Is this why he's gaining the time? Because these guys are stuck in traffic central as it stands. He, he's driving the wheels off this McLaren though, isn't he? Uh, is uh, Fernando. Oh, and, oh uh, is it 404, Christian Muller. Yeah. He's lost it on the, yeah, the chicane. Yeah, yeah, the turn 5 6 chicane. Claiming a lot, a lot of, uh, of, of, of bodywork today. Unfortunately, let's have a look. Muthen, 29.8 for Muthen. Athenstadt is 29.5. Five. Elias yeah. Fernando, it's going to be a 29.2. Six tenths taken out of the lead that lap. I um, don't think three that's going to be enough. Taken out, of the, uh, taken out of P2. No, it's not. He really needs to keep that kind of seven, eight tenths a lap going. But yeah. once you've got through the... Once you've got through those first couple of laps on the tyre, it does just drop off very, very quickly. And the 441 car is having issues at the final corner. That's Team More Purple having Ooh, issues at the final corner. looks a bit corner. damaged, that, that car, does doesn't look it like it's uh, a little bit war wounded indeed. I can tell that, and I'm on the helicam. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, that front bumper is dropped down. Yeah, that is a lot of damage to the front end of that uh, McLaren. Looks like it might have had a helping hand to a uh, front-facing barrier incident. <laughs> a little bit of a slight nudge, was it? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't. I can't say it's definitely oh, happened okay. because I'm not. Uh, I must admit, I'm not watching the. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, watching any replays or anything. No, fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just looking at these. I'm. I'm, I'm studying the top three guys right now, and uh, and Fernan uh, Fernando. Four point has... eight. Four point seven. That's yeah. its second coming out of Athens start this lap. Yeah, he is uh, he is really, really pushing that so McLaren it's hard. Enough. The gap is still five seconds. He'd need to make more than a second a lap now to catch up to P2. 29.1 for P1. 29.9 for P2. It's going to be a 29.2 again for Elias Fernando. Seven tenths out of Athens out of that lap. Yeah, he needs to do this now for the next, the next what? Oh, well, Three, until four laps. Until the end. Yeah. He's got to take this much time out until the end. But Athenstadt at the moment is sandwiched in between lapped cars. So he is going to continue dropping time as... Uh, oh! Battle here between Suslov and uh, Kontalesa. Oh, this is close. I think Suslov has managed to get past. He had the inside, oh, then the switcheroo. outside. Oh, Oh! That's the... Kontalesa tried that move before, and it's when he hit the Ferrari. Which he oh, still just... hasn't got a penalty for, Kotelosa. That's interesting. Maybe it went the other way. It has, actually. Luca, uh, Luca Amaral has got a five-second penalty, the number 47 Ferrari. Maybe they felt that he was the cause of that incident. Athenstadt has managed to get clear of the traffic. Gap is 4.4 seconds now to, to Muthen. He's just, yeah, the number one car has absolutely dominated this race. You know, the, the 913 has given them uh, uh, a hard race to the end, but the... the Crew of the number one car has just kept it calm and collected and uh, kind of just driven away with it. But quality, quality doesn't really make a difference. It's what happens on the race days that counts. That's where your points get made and that's where you, you gain your most points. So the fact that, yeah, maybe the 913 over over one lap is, uh, is rapid, it's just proven today that you don't need to set the fastest lap in qualification to win the race. No, absolutely, absolutely. Big lap there from Elias Fernando. 28-8 is another six tenths taken out of the lead uh, ahead of him. Another six tenths taken out of the gap to Athenstadt. Yeah, it's not going to be enough though, is it? Terribly, there were yellow flags. It's the 955 car, I think, that's had an issue. As Suslov now gets overtaken again by uh, by Kotelesa. That's interesting. I think the gap now is is, Dar is Daniel uh, Daniel Bourne and uh, Daryl Young now, the uh, McLaren, the BMW and the Lambo. The yeah. problem is that the uh, Dan Daniel Bourne is stuck. stuck behind. He's going to get past the lap traffic now, but that's cost him time. The gap is 1.3 seconds now. Uh, he really was all over time. the rear of uh, Daryl Young previous lap, um, but yeah, now he's stuck, stuck behind uh, lap traffic, and the lap traffic, by the looks of it, is a lot faster. That is Gray, yes, which yeah, we spoke about. John, yeah, uh, John Gray. Fast guy, really, really fast yeah. guy. And uh, who we got? So is it uh, Pinatti? Pin Pinatti in the uh, no, Pinatti and uh, PSGP swap. Yeah. 
team. They're, they're quite close, battling down for P, uh, P15. Um, I'm quite gutted that I couldn't race today. I looked at this race now. I was uh, actually really, really quite gutted yeah, I think that we, time. I think we could have had some uh, <laughs> some tidy results in this race. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be a good one, absolutely. It's going to be our first ever um, retained podium finish. Yeah, agreed. Which is uh, which is nice. Yeah, it's going to be you know it's a big it's a big groundbreaking moment for for Toga Esports as a team to uh, to take their first podium that's going to stay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, it's true. No, I think Fernando is. Things. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. And I think I think Fernando knows now that essentially that's uh, yeah. he's just got to hold now yeah, where he is. Yeah, there's no need now for him to continue um, kind of going crazy with with lap times. He can just kind of back off a bit, um, let the end of the race come to him. You know. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and yeah, apologies earlier, guys, for uh, the poor stream uh, quality. I think I actually found out what the root problem is. Uh, because I've had race control open now for the last 10 minutes and it's been absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, I really do apologise, but thanks, Ollie, for stepping in and hosting the uh, second part of this race. Still appreciate it, mate. No, Thank it's you. all good, mate. It's all good. So the gap now, by the way, between Daniel Bourne and, uh, and Daryl Young is 2.8 seconds. So now that he's not oh, in the wow. toe, Daniel Bourne has really dropped off the back. I don't think it helps that he might have had John Gray hampering him a little bit. Uh, yeah, any spear is. Laps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, not not exactly the uh, the face that you want to see in the rear mirrors. Yeah, it's, it marks the halfway stage in the championship as well. Uh, and with, here we uh, go. Michael Muthan crosses the line in the number one car. It's going to be the final lap. He gets around the you? lap traffic without too much of an issue. And unless something really, really drastic happens, and I hope I'm not commentator's cursing him, I'm going to touch wood actually to cancel out the commentator's curse. <laughs> this is going to be a nice, uh, a nice Sunday drive to the line. Uh, you know, he, uh, could, he could run a one, he could run a one thirty-four and, and still come out ahead of uh, Athenstadt. Uh, so what Julius has put is that Julius can, uh, is asked if we could put an esports livery on the Lexus. Oh, I'm sure. So I he could can be a clown, a, class race driver. I'm sure I could rustle up a little, um, a little black and green Lexus livery for you, Julius. <laughs> I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can. But uh, yeah, I think it's been, it's been a stellar drive um, from the uh, car number one, the Porsche in uh, lead, leading place right now. Is it the Cry... Cryonics. Ooh, I can't even... Cryonics Racing. They've, uh, bo both drivers have driven um, remarkably well. So congratulations to these guys. These guys. We said, no, it's not over yet. But uh, I think it's uh, we're almost uh, safe to say that that he's they're gonna win dude if you think the lexus netting is bad you didn't see me when i was doing the mclaren the mclaren netting was one of the worst things i've ever seen in my life they had netting, go, they had netting for parts of the car you couldn't even see from the outside so yeah michael, michael muthan crosses the line now reina athenstadt is going to cross won. as well it's going to be close elias fernando finishes the race less than four seconds behind uh, Reina Athenstadt to bring home the first ever podium that, uh, that's going to stay post race for the Togo Racing Esports team. Massive for us. <laughs> yeah, massive, massive, a massive shout out to those guys. Then it's Daryl Young, uh, the man who also races for Wild Wild Ride or whatever it was that, uh, that Alex was talking about. Then we got Daniel Bourne in the 717 Lamborghini comes home in P6 with the McLaren of Luke Wilson in the 420 car coming home. Uh, sixth, sorry, Dan Bourne came home fifth. Then Terakov is P7 in the 627 BMW. Then Kotelesa in the 787 uh, Aston Martin. Then the 41 Lamborghini belonging to Stefan Suslov comes home in P9. Rounding out the top 10 is the 88 Audi of Amers. Then we got Luca Amaral in the 47 Ferrari, joined by the 404 Ferrari of Muller, finishing P11 and 12. Then it's the number 40 Audi of Holter in 13th with Raider in the number 16 a Lamborghini just behind him at the end. Then it's almost a minute and a half jump back to the Burden who finishes P15 with Panati finishing P16 in the 104 Aston. Then the only uh, Mercedes on the grid today finishes P17 uh, with Mios Miskizik finishing that race out for those guys. Then it's the 955 and 411 Aston Martins finishing 17th and 18th Raves and Morrison respectively driving those cars to the end. Then the number 7 Porsche of Hinman finishing... Oh, people have started leaving now and I've lost my place. Finished 20th, here we go. Winch with those penalties and uh, contacts finishes P... 
21 in the 327 Bentley. Disappointing for them, they were running in the points uh, around the halfway mark. Yeah, I think they had proper issues. Can I finish they, this so, before the server restarts? Yeah. Then it's Bull in the number 29 McLaren finishes 22nd with Stark <laughs> in the number 97 Aston Martin finishing 23rd. Then it's John Gray in the number 14 McLaren finishing 24th. <laughs> Cook in the 218. Ferrari, they had a couple of issues, finishing P25 with the number 71, the other Audi, finishing in P26 at the hands of Pritchard. Then it's Denisov in the number 441 McLaren, finishing P27 with Wolfgang Kuhn in the triple five Ferrari, finishing P28. They, those guys had some issues, especially with the chicanes. Then, although that doesn't thin it down at Zolder at all. Then Carstens no. finishes P29 in the number 70 McLaren, followed by the number 21 McLaren in P30, driven by Hammer. Then it's Matt Kruger in the number 81 Ferrari, finishes P31 with Rick Meyer in the number 28 BMW. They had a big penalty at the start and then a drive through penalty um, for something. I'm not really sure what. Yeah, wow. Hammer ended up with 130 seconds of penalties. That's an interesting oh, wow. read. And yeah, Rick Meyer finishes P32 in the number 28 UCC car. Sorry to the guy in chat who was, who was talking about that. Uh, then Thoman in the number 42 Aston Martin finishes 33rd and rounding out the grid is Gamboa finishing P34 in the number 24 Ferrari. Those guys didn't take the start. And breathe. Whew. Yeah, that was a little <laughs> bit. It was a, it was a little bit auctioneer, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah. And, and breathe. I mean, yeah. Wow. What that, that hour's gone so quick. I know I spent most of the time no, trying to fix issues. Absolutely, but... it's whipped it... past, doesn't it? It has. It generally has. Um, I don't know if there's anyone around. So we do, do normally open up driver interviews if anyone is wanting to, but uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes before we uh, wrap up the streams. But yeah, big thank you to everybody who's raised this evening. Uh, Zolda is one of those tracks that's... I think it's a bit Marmite, Zolda. Some people love it and then some people hate it. If you For hate me personally, it, you're wrong, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I love Zolder, and um, I don't know why people would hate such a, a, a lovely track. But so, uh, congratulations to the top three. I'm not going to put any bias, but come on, Toga boys, let's go. Um, yeah, massive result for us. Massive, massive. But so, uh, not everybody else, uh, obviously, the guys who won, uh, P2 as well, absolutely great race. Well done to Big Brain Racing for P2 as well. Um, I, well. I don't know where the next Big Brain Racing car was uh, in relation to. Oh, Tomlin, was it Tomlin in P uh, P11, I think, potentially? I'm not sure in the end where they finished. At, at one stage, I know they were they were around right. there. Have so we got anyone coming for interviews? Anyone for interviews? I think we have. Have we? I can't see anyone waiting nope. at the moment. No. I don't see anyone at all. Okay. I think... So, uh, I think Quickly just drop a message in the chat and see if anyone does want to come up, because it's always nice to speak to some of the guys, especially after a race that was quite as chaotic as that. Yeah, yeah, um, true. Uh, ne next week sees us at Barcelona as well, guys, by the way, as Ollie just posts a message. Uh, so the last three rounds are Barca, Monza, and then we finally finish at Silverstone uh, on the 14th of April, and that will conclude uh, the Driver Swap Cup, and then we'll be announce the, uh, the winner of the Driver Swap. But yeah, Barcelona, the tire shredder of Barcelona next week. I think we're going to get, we'll get Callum and Elias in at the same time, shall we? Uh, yeah, these guys absolutely bossing it in today's race, bringing home the first Toga eSport racing podium that is going to uh, stay after the stewards' decisions. And I mean, I mean, it was just a brilliant race for you guys, you know, completely clean. The pace was really, really brilliant. And you managed to hold off the uh, the guys behind after that pit stop. I mean, the opening stint, Callum, how, how was that for you? You you managed to stick with the front guys uh, relatively well, almost accidentally overtaking them at one point when they yeah. when they got together. Um, but managing to survive through through the regular chaos of Zolder, how was it? How was it? Sorry. Um, yeah, it was uh, an interesting stint, that's for sure. Obviously, the Porsches fighting a bit helped me stay with them. Uh and yeah, as you say, nearly accidentally overtaking him. I just wanted to sit behind in third. I was quite happy there, to be honest. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was it was tricky. We couldn't really decide between us who was actually going to qualify. <laughs> Weren't sure on the pace uh, either way. So there was a bit of debate. But luckily, managed to get a lap in, got his P3. And yeah, just great job uh, from Elias as well. And I'm very happy I managed to stay up front, not cause any incidents, not cause a penalty like at Imola. And uh, yeah, 
very, very happy. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the opening stint is so crucial in uh, in these kind of sprint format races because it is all about, well, basically just going out and having the best pace that you that you physically can. And I think, um, you know, you made you made a really really good call pitting pretty much on on the half hour, letting letting both drivers have have pretty much an equal share of the race. Because actually, at the end of it, your pace was uh, was not that dissimilar. Uh, Fernando getting in the car and uh, hitting some really, really consistent, really, really fast lap times to, to hold on to that podium at the end. Elias, how was the final stint for you? Uh, it's stressful at the start with a Lamborghini, but uh, he did a mistake. So it got a big gap to the cars behind them, and then it was like uh, just drive and not do not not make any mistakes and bring it home. So yeah, absolutely. Did you think that maybe there was an opportunity to catch up to to P two? You know, a slightly a slightly slower driver getting in for the second stint. Not any disrespect to to Athenstadt at all. He was still very quick, um, but the gap did shrink across the stint. Did you think maybe you might be able to get to him, or or were you conscious that? That realistically, P three was was the maximum for today. Uh, maybe if he did a mistake, but if he did not, I don't think yeah, uh, that was possible. But yeah, absolutely, that is uh, that is absolutely understandable. Well, I mean, a, a massive congratulations to you guys, you know, for for coming home in P three and in what was a ridiculously strong field again today. Um, you know, all I can say to you guys is thank you for for trusting the process. You know, as the team manager, we're we're conscious that it's a completely new venture for us. So to take a podium uh, so new into the into the foray of uh, of sim racing for for the Toga Racing Esports team is massive. So thanks a lot to you guys, and uh, I hope you have the best of luck again uh, this time next week when we are in. Oh God knows, I don't even know where we are next week. Barcelona. 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 Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Ollie and Hayden. Yeah, it's uh, very happy and I guess proud to uh, yeah give you guys uh, a podium that will actually stick this time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we can only thank you Love guys. That. Thanks a lot. Have a good rest of your yeah, evening. Yeah, cheers, guys. Do yeah, take care. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to talk to uh, Damien Konzik. So Damien is uh, is the driver that opened the race for the nine one three car. Put it on pole, which was um, which was uh, obviously very impressive. He went out, did the lap relatively early doors, and uh, then kind of just left it. Um, took the pole and then had the lead taken off by the number one car. That was a very intense battle through through that first stint, Damien. How was it for you? Ah, uh, it it was difficult. I mean, at at the start, I did, I really did, wasn't really happy with what what uh, the car number one was doing but then I look at the replays it was all fine uh, very nice aggressive driving elbows out it, it was very good from from him, his side I kind of messed up so it, it's all on me uh, I had the pace to retake that lead but I just didn't capitalize on it yeah yeah absolutely I uh, I know I remember me and Hayden uh, looking at that incident down into the second chicane and uh, obviously you realised afterwards um, uh, and possibly on the advice of your teammates that actually giving back the position was the best thing to do to, to elongate the battle and uh, to not receive a penalty, which is, you know, brilliant sportsmanship from you guys as a team to realise yeah, that that was the right thing to do. And we can only thank you for that because it's, it's the kind of thing that we love to see when, when people realise that they've made a mistake um, uh, and consciously fix it rather than waiting for, for the stewarding team to give out a penalty. So we can only say thank you for that. But um, in this, in the second stint, watching Athenstadt there, did you feel that maybe that P2 was at risk at any point? Did you think that maybe Elias would be able to close up enough from behind, or did you feel confident that, uh, that Athenstadt was going to be able to, to carry the car to P2 in the end? I must say, I was pretty confident. Um, we both realised he is slower than me, but he is very consistent, and he doesn't really make any mistakes. He had like almost seven seconds of a lead, so... He did his job very well, so I was actually pretty confident, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, looking forward to Barcelona next week, do you think it's going to be another track? And I ask this, or it's almost a completely null question to ask because you're fast everywhere. But do you think it might be a good track for you, Damien? <laughs> I don't like the track. <laughs> oh, do you not? <laughs> oh, okay, that's interesting, that's interesting. I the question like the track, is, so. do you yeah. not like the track because you're slow there? Or are you still ridiculously fast? 
but just don't like it. Uh, you'll see next week. I'm okay. I say I'm okay on it. Not too bad, but expect to see him in Poland, ladies yeah, and gents. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was about to say. <laughs> I was about to say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna translate that message to English, which is I'm still really, really fast, just not as fast <laughs> as I would like to be. <laughs> I don't hate it now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh... I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. So. No, a massive congratulations to, to yeah, you and Rainer. It was a, a brilliant race for you guys. Unfortunate that you couldn't convert another pole into another win. Um, but yeah, still, P2, massive points all for you in the uh, in the fight for the overall lead in the championship. So uh, yeah, just massive. Thanks a lot for, for <laughs> coming and for being clean and being fast every single race. And I wish you the best of luck next time out of Barcelona. Have a good rest of your evening, mate. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you, mate. Well, that brings to the uh, that brings to an end what has been a rather chaotic last uh, hour and forty five minutes since seven thirty. It's been a busy one. It really has. It really has. We've had everything today, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. There's been there's been thrills. There's been spills. There's uh there's been a little bit of everything. You know, there's been there's been a couple of crashes, some crazy crazy fast laps across a lot of drivers, uh, and in the end, what has been some brilliant brilliant racing around a track that I was expecting people to find very difficult. But they've actually behaved themselves really well, which is nice to yeah, see. Yeah, no red flag this evening. Obviously, a few penalties here and there. Uh, the appeals process is obviously now open for penalties to be appealed. Uh, and I can, can quite confidently say there's, there's uh, a, a few tickets few open already. <laughs> yeah, a few tickets open already. I keep on um, getting so uh, no Yeah, I keep on seeing the, <laughs> yeah. the the pings pop up as uh, yeah. as, as we yeah. continue doing those interviews. It was I uh, reopened. Yeah. There were five or six tickets opened just whilst we were yeah. talking to Damien. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but that's fine. It is what it is. We'll go through those, and uh, obviously we'll it, we'll get those done and um, reply to to drivers as soon as we can. Obviously, we're in a queue at the moment, so um, yeah, we will get those done. But Ollie, thank you so much. I uh, really do appreciate for uh, stepping in when my internet decided not to be into it anymore. Really do appreciate the hard work, and it's amazing to commentate next to you because uh, you are a fantastic commentator. So thank you very much for uh, stepping in tonight as well. Thanks a lot, man. You're you're the reason that I've got such a brilliant space to to be able to commentate in you know um without you toga wouldn't be here and it would be a i'd be in a very different place in my life i think uh without all the brilliant guys that i've met uh through this server and um yeah i mean brilliant racing tonight on the whole for, from the whole field the pace was really close a lot, uh, across a lot of cars um and i'm sure we're going to see a very very similar thing uh next time out in barcelona and uh 100%. maybe we might need to start looking into these pit skill bops a little bit more because it was nice to see something that wasn't a mclaren b, b yeah, there was, was only one mclaren on the podium the next one was like p8 like what yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it's not how this good. normally works but yeah 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 people give it a ne negative rep but i think actually tonight it actually proved that it's actually quite quite good so uh, yeah we'll, we'll look into that but uh, yeah, I, I don't know for next week. Obviously, uh, Ches normally has the Sunday slot, uh, but Ches uh, quite possibly won't be around next weekend for uh, round number four. So it could potentially be me again, or it might be another commentator, depending on availability. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll have it covered regardless. Uh, it just might be someone completely different. Yeah. So uh, obviously, the final thank you is to you guys, the viewers. Thank you all for, for sacrificing your Sunday evenings. To, to come and watch us do some pretend car racing. We love you all very much. Without you guys, we wouldn't have the community that we do, and we wouldn't have the uh, the, the ability to host these races in the same way that we do. Uh, you know, it's you guys that interact with us every evening that make this commentating so much easier. Being in conversation with you guys through the chat makes our lives, mine and Hayden's lives, doing commentary so, so much easier. Yeah. Um, it's nice to know that we're talking to, to actual people rather than just talking to an empty space. So thank you yeah. all across all three platforms for, for being here tonight, and I'm sure we'll see you uh, next time. Have a good rest of your evening, or afternoon, possibly, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, yeah, have a good one, and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. That was really good fun, that, yeah. Hang on, we still live? It says we're still live. Okay. But it's the same as each over here. Oh, is that supposed to be? Okay. I didn't realise. Okay, okay. Uh,
Well, I, 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 I let the stream team do whatever the hell they want. That's If the stream team are happy, I'm happy. Of course, I mean, it's quite, quite self-centred sometimes, to say, say it in the nicest possible manner, yeah. <laughs> 